with their razor sharp teeth and quench for human blood. The aptly named ghost bat is a terrifying sight, but it's what would come next that a cameraman was fearing most. The unworldly monster was about to attack. This type of dramatization about bats as spooky creatures of the night has been going on for a long time. And let's face it, in the past they've been linked to some pretty shady characters. Took the form of a vampire bat. I am Dracula. But if you take away the dramatic voiceover and the eerie music, bats don't have to be so scary. Even this ghost bat. His name is Patrick and he's in care at the Australian Bat Clinic after suffering some nasty friction burns in the wild. Although he's a carnivorous bat, he's not after human blood. But he will chow down on mealworms if you offer them to him. Patrick was actually rather friendly. He didn't mind a bat from time to time. Ghost bats are also thought to be highly intelligent. Patrick would often call out if he was hungry or if he just wanted attention. We even made some attempted bat calls back at him to see if he'd respond. He was definitely listening. He can also pull off a decent yawn. Some people will never warm to bats like Patrick and that's okay. But remember, just because he has a spooky name and big black eyes, that doesn't mean he's nasty or out to get you. He's just easily misunderstood. But for bat carer Trish, he's a temporary best friend. What do you think? Would you be scared if you saw a ghost bat? Or do you think they're cool? Anything can happen Friday. The art and cultural site of Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. You're with Grace at Anything Can Happen Friday. And of course, I've been speaking to Noor Atika. She is the uh, PhD student of zoology. So let's continue our conversation here. We've talked about the misconception of bats and a bit of the ecosystems around the world. But what are the programs that you have joined to increase the awareness of these harmless mammals? Okay, for the experience, actually, um, I have experience conducted a bad awareness program at Taksit Chini Pahang, uh, Malaysia on right. 2014, involving primary school students from three different schools um, around Taksit Chini, and uh, these programs organized by Taksit Chini Research Center, University of Kabangsa, and Malaysia, where I come from, and in collaboration with the Malaysian Bad Conservation Research Unit and a non-governmental organization treat every environment special and uh, in this program the students were exposed about diversity anatomy ecology and also importance of bats in the ecosystems also uh, bats conservation through workshop containing slide presentations um, short sketch with bat mascot poster drawing 3d model of bats loose making and also pieces other than that, um, last year I also was invited to present my work on bat awareness program. Um, I also to promote Malaysian Bat Conservation Research Unit and Southeast Asian Bat Conservation Research Unit to the participants and organizers at Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, uh, Kasset State University, Thailand, and Wildlife, Parasite, and Disease from According to Disease Ecology Workshop. So there are quite a lot of programs out there and you have participated quite a few there. But let's go back to the first program that you visited a primary school student. What were their first reactions? Okay, for the first, uh, because actually um, I'm doing a um, research study at the Tasikini. Mm -hmm. So they uh, already have like what we call a preliminary, uh, what we call preliminary, um, Exposure, mm -hmm. exposure to the bats and but they also uh, uh, have asked whether uh, does bats is blind does bats carry rabies and also does bats is, uh, pass one of the sample eat uh, their durian and anything <laughs> destroy the plant uh, the orchard right 
and then uh, from the from the program i um, let them know what actually that's doing in order uh, to give them a right concept about uh, important impact in the ecosystem so how long was the program this program actually the duration is about two days and involving the uh, three schools where uh, at the first day uh, this program was uh, conducted for uh, focus on the one school because the number of students is quite um, high compared to uh, the second day where the students is quite uh, small and combined two different schools in one day. Mm-hmm. So uh, moving on to the next project that you talked about, could you elaborate more uh, when it comes to increasing the awareness of the uh, bats? Besides the program that I have uh, conducted and joined, mm-hmm. other activities conducted worldwide or uh, provide organizational framework to coordinate and implement conservation research, capacity building, education and outreach program. And this organizational framework was built through that conferences, conferences and workshops at countries that have lack information and lack of that experts in the country, for example, in Southeast Asian region. And these uh, activities and uh, was conducted by Southeast Asian Fat Conservation Research Unit. Other than that, uh, other different organizations, for example, Bad Conservation International, also initiate to give award grants and scholarship for students that are interested to conduct studies on bad psychology and share their findings with other people. Right, so Atika, when it comes to um, educating public and or uh, raising the uh, importance of preserving and conserving this environment or ecosystem, the bats ecosystem I'm talking about, why is it so important? Or are bats being attacked by certain issues or environmental development there? It is because the bats are actually facing threats worldwide. For example, requiring activities, habitat loss, urbanization, and intensive hunting. The deforestation, for example, can make bats uh, lost place to leave the roost, and this could increase bat vulnerability. In Malaysia itself, it is a critical country for international bat conservations, where Malaysia holds. 10% of work that fauna and quarter of it was listed as vulnerable in IUCN red listed. And for intensive hunting, uh, some country dispatch as food and also they hunt bats for a souvenir for a decoration where they put in a frame and these are quite not good for bats. Uh, other countries that mainly have uh, quite high deforestation, for example, in uh, Malaysia itself. Oh, right. Yeah, in Malaysia itself, in uh, quarrying uh, the limestone area, because limestones have cave where the bad rooms inside it. Mm. And also, uh, deforestations occur in Indonesia. In the ecosystem, actually, bats can uh, give benefit to human directly through its guano. Bad guano is actually an excellent source of fast active nitrogen and promote growth of plants and can be used as a fertilizer tea. And research on 2014 have approved it. Um, an example of a country that always uh, that always use um, the bad guano as fertilizer is Cambodia and also Vietnam. All right. So you talked about the Malaysia, but then um, let's just talk about bright side of it uh, for a while. So there is a de- this new species found from Sabah last year, 2015. So would you uh, elaborate more on this? Okay. Yeah. The um, this species, the new species, actually uh, was collected at around uh, one thousand and six hundred meter on. Gunung Trasmadi, Trasmadi mm-hmm. Mount in Sabah, Malaysia by uh, Charles M. Francis in 1983. This specimen is kept in the Natural History Museum London after since and was being regarded as a uh, rhinolophus tri uh, for latest uh, the existed that species uh, recorded. But Together with the additional specimen from Kalimantan, Indonesia, and from Thailand, researcher by using morphological, acoustic, and genetic data revealed that actually that there are a new species to science, and the new species then is known as 
and our first Fantiki to honor the C.M. Francis for his great contributions in Southeast Asian bad taxonomy. Stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Your Adrian ASEAN will be back after this break. You're now listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. <laughs> 